So I got an email today and people have been uh, sending me uh, messages about Voyager and their new customer agreement. And I had to take a look at it and it's long, it's super long. I mean, all customer agreements are, all of them are. So what I'm gonna do is just give you the highlights and tell you what I think. And um, I'll just be honest with you right now. In the links in my description, there's the exchange and wallet fees. And all the different exchanges and wallets I've ever used or are using, I tell you if they're recommended or not recommended. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, for Voyager, I'm gonna put on hold. And I'm gonna say that I can't recommend it right now. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why. And it's because of this agreement. So let's get into it. Voyager disclosures, this is pretty boring, but it's, it does state this. Cryptos are not regulated or are lightly regulated in most countries, including the US. However, one or more countries may take regulatory actions that could severely restrict the right to acquire, own, hold, sell, or use crypto, which would adversely impact their value. Voyager may be forced to suspend or discontinue the ability to purchase or sell crypto without notice. And before I move on to the actual user agreement, these this is all legal speak and things that you have to put in your agreements because you never know. It's just like, like with batteries, right? Batteries will say stuff like, Batteries can explode at any time, and if you're damaged, we won't be held liable. So you're thinking to yourself, Jesus, are these batteries going to blow up my face and I'm going to be disfigured? I can't use these. But again, just legal speak, it's a big CYA thing. Cover your A, and that's it. But there are some concerning things, and let's just go through them, shall we? So I'm going to compare this user agreement to, real quick, to Coinbase's, Gemini's, Coinbase, and Kraken and how they really do all add up. And uh, let me see here, let's go over this one. This, the only, there's nothing really great in, uh, in this one. Oh my God, it's so long. But uh, there's just one section there. So the Voyager Agreement. To help the government better detect the funding of terrorism and money laundering activities, just so you know, federal law requires all financial institutions obtain, verify, and record info that identifies each person who opens an account. This is one of the primary reasons why there's a wait list that's called KYC and AML. And if you're out there going, you know what? I just haven't been able to get in. Well, they just instituted the, the new wait list. And also, if you mess up uh, on the intake form, uh, just know you're going to go through manual review. And that's a problem. But uh, it is what it is. And they're really cracking down over Voyager. Customer understands that when the customer opens an account, Voyager will ask for the customer's name, address, date of birth, and other identifying information. Also asked for copies of the customer's driver's license, passport, or other documents. When I opened it up, it wasn't like that. It was just an ID, your information, and that was it. Now they're saying they might need some other things. Not that they're going to, but they could if something is suspicious, just so you know. Let's see. Verification procedures may, in Voyager's sole discretion, require the customers to verify certain information. Uh, bank statement, social security, whatever. Okay. Here's where it gets interesting. Account funding. Cash. Customers cash, fiat, dollars, whatever, dollars, in the account is insured up to 250000 per depositor against the failure of the FDIC member bank because Voyager is only available in the United States. FDIC insurance does not protect against the failure of Voyager or any custodian as defined below or malfeasance by any Voyager or custodian employee. So when it's in the bank and it comes over, not so much. I mean, you have FDIC insured. Uh, but it doesn't protect against the failure of Voyager. So just be aware. And also, just so you know, Voyager has plans to roll this out globally, and that's why I'm talking to everybody today. Voyager is not responsible for any delays, losses, or fees in correction, connection with a crypto deposit and is not obligated to assist or support customer in any fashion with respect to an unsuccessful crypto deposit or with respect to any issues a customer may experience at a point in time prior to the successful completion. However, that Voyager may, in its sole discretion, provide reasonable assistance to a customer in the event that a customer requests assistance in connection with an attempted failed, erroneous, or otherwise incomplete crypto deposit. And but I'll do a bunch of stuff. So what does this mean? This means that they don't have to do anything for you. They don't. They will provide reasonable uh, customer service to you within reason and then go from there. I think, actually, I don't know what to think because... When you talk about CYA types of things, I mean, this is what it is. And the reason why they put these out is so you'll read them because you're supposed to read them. No one reads them though. They just blow right past it. But uh, I mean, 
that's what the channel's for here to make sure that you're aware. And I've had a lot of people ask me like, what the heck is going on? Let's go forward for deposits. Oh, also so you know, consent to rehypothecate. Customer grants voids the right to, uh, for the notice to the customer to hold crypto uh, held in the customer's account or name and to pledge, repledge, hypothecate, rehypothecate, sell, lend, or otherwise transfer or use any amount of such crypto separately or together with other property with all attendant rights of ownership and for any periods of time and without retaining a like amount of crypto and to use or invest such cryptocurrency at customer sole risk. So just so you know, that's what's going on. And then down, and before I go on, if you look at a lot of things that 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 do these, these types of practices, you can opt out. You can opt out for all these things and not receive any type of interest or things like that, and they won't do those. But just so you know that uh, that interest that you're getting on Voyager comes with a risk, and that's what the risk is. Now, I've been using Voyager for geez, about a year now. Haven't had any issues as far as that part, but uh, just so you know, won't know and be aware. This is the big one. Refusal to allow USD withdrawals. Voyager may refuse to allow a United States dollar dollar withdrawal. Voyager believes that such refusal is necessary in order for Voyager to comply with its anti-money laundering compliance obligations. I think there's something going on with money laundering. Not that I think that. I think that they're cracking down because they don't want to, because they're a publicly traded company. So they have to be that stringent on these types of things. Because if not, SEC can go against them. The withdrawal would leave insufficient funds in the account to pay for any unsettled transactions. Three, the amount of, and this is why they would uh, refuse to allow you to draw. The amount of such withdrawal is equal to or greater than the sum of all USD deposits made into the account within the immediately preceding 60 days or the account ownership, naming convention or other details associated with the withdrawal account does not match the account. So again, let me read that number three again. The amount of such withdrawal is equal to or greater than the sum of all the deposits made into the account within the immediately preceding 60 days. So let's say before 60 days, 70 days, 80 days, you took out $10,000 or you deposited $10,000. And then afterwards, you say, I want to take out 12,000. Well, they're like, well, past 60 days, you didn't do that, so we're not going to allow it. Even though within the 60-day time frame, maybe you put 100,000 in. They're like, no, we could just stop that because we don't, it's just whatever. We're not going to do it. Now, again, does this uh, mean that they will not allow that to happen? No, but they're saying that they can do that. And that's the big difference, right? Because we're going to take a look at the other ones, and it's the same type of thing. All right, so we're moving forward, moving forward. Uh, no leverage. Customer understand that Voyager does not offer leverage of their services, so you can't do leverage trading. Just you know. This is another big one. Crypto withdrawals. Customer may arrange to withdraw and transfer crypto in the account to an external wallet. Great. Customer understands and agrees that Voyager may, in its sole discretion, delay, modify, or prohibit, and whale and hold or impart any request of withdrawal, including this. If they believe that such action is prudent in order to satisfy Voyager's anti-money laundering obligations, again, anti-money laundering, again in here, Voyager suspected the customer, the wallet address, or the withdrawal itself are connected to, associated with, or being used in uh, fraud, or the withdrawal is being attempted within 60 days of a deposit of USD or crypto into the account. So let's break that down again. The withdrawal is being attempted within two months of a deposit of dollars or crypto into the account. So what it's saying here is if within two months you deposited funds, whatever you did, and then you bought cryptocurrency, and within those two months you say, you know what, I want to take this out. They're like, well, for whatever reason, it's at our sole discretion. We're not going to allow you to do that because it's within 60 days. Outside of 60 days, then we have no choice because it's in our terms and agreements. We can allow this to happen. Within 60 days, they can just deny it. Just say, well, it's, it's part of our, our terms and conditions. Would they do that? Well, there's been a lot of complaints right now of, uh, of deposits, uh, especially what's going on, I think, with the anti-money laundering. And uh, that's a problem. So if you want to wait two months, that's uh, what you got. I mean, not that it's going to happen all the time, just saying that it could happen. Customer also understands that Voyager reserves the right to cancel any pending withdrawal. Something, something, something. Okay. 
And then that's, let's see what else. Interest, you can opt out. How interest is paid? So it's, it's within five days of the last uh, of the last part of the month. Uh, interest program risks. Again, talking about interest, just so you know. You can get paid interest in all your crypto, but this is the risk. Participating in the interest program may put customers at risk. Loans made through the interest program may not be secured. Customer has exposure to borrower credit risk. In the event of a borrower default, Voyager does not have an obligation or the ability to return affected crypto back to customer's account, crypto subject to a loan will not be held by the void by Voyager or the custodians, and the interest program and underlying loans are not insured. So again, if you want to earn interest, there's your risks, and you can opt out right there. So that's the big stuff. And I just want to go over other user agreements, and we're going to start right now with Coinbase because. That's kind of like, not the standard, but that's what uh, you would expect to see like the same thing. Well, if you go through, just look, if you just control C or command C, look for withdrawal, there really is no time frame that they put it. They just said that we'll get it into the reasonable amount. Uh, and that's the big thing. Uh, in Gemini, as far as withdrawals, they state this. We process wire withdrawals to other user bank accounts. They're talking about cash. Wire withdrawals initiated before three, PM Eastern time will typically be processed on the same day or next business day. Wire withdrawals may not be processed outside of normal banking hours. You further agree and understand that in certain situations, transfer times may be delayed. So as, as far as like cash and things like that, um, it's pretty much the same day or within you know a certain amount of time. And uh, let's see. It's the same thing, debit card purchases and wires. Y or an ACH. Ah, here's what I was looking for. Digital asset withdrawals. Digital asset withdrawals would typically be processed at the speed of a digital asset network. In certain situations, digital asset withdrawals may be delayed in connection with downtime or the congestion or dis disruption of a digital asset network. So it's a little bit different than Voyager there. They're like, hey, we could hold up to 60 days. They're just like, look, at the speed of the network. Not too bad. Okay. Let's go on to Celsius. See what they say. And right here, withdrawals. You may make a complete or partial withdrawal of eligible digital assets from your Celsius wallet at any time. Celsius initiates the withdrawal process immediately following a withdrawal request when possible. However, we may require up to three days after you submit. Celsius and a third-party partner may experience cyber attacks, extreme market conditions, and just so you know, this could happen. And uh, we will halt transactions either temporarily or permanently. Users can withdraw any amount at any time. However, our policies may require additional security checks that require up to 48 hours to complete. And then finally, we're going to take a look at Kraken. Where did I put it? Ah, ah, let's see. You may withdraw your... No, let's say it's not it. Ah, last one. Withdrawals. Kraken reserves the right to require that your Kraken account holds sufficient funds to cover one-to-one -one any deposit using ACH or credit card for 120 days post deposit. So here they're saying, look, it's gonna be 120 days uh, post deposit and we could stop it. Your Kraken account will indicate if such unsecured deposit hold is required. We may permit you to use such funds to buy, sell, or trade in connection with margin trading, but you may not withdraw such funds prior to the resolution of the unsecured deposit hold. So in that situation, a little bit longer, but I've used Kraken, haven't had any issues with that so far, and that's the big thing. So finally, I know this went a little bit long, but it has to be. Um, in the link in the description for change of wallets, I can't recommend uh, I can't recommend Voyager right now. We had Steve on the show, well, over at Alex Masculi's show, and uh, we asked him the questions. He's like, look, I need 120 days, and we've already gone you know, 75 days, 75 days into it, or was it 45? I forgot what it was too. But we're looking at like the, around the end of May is when things are gonna start to resolve. So the thing is this, when you come to this channel, you trust me to tell you what exactly is going on. And if I tell you to go to Voyager and you're having all these problems, and I've heard nothing but problems right now, that's a problem. And I will just say that I still believe in Voyager. I still believe in their team. I invest in people and I still think they're gonna do great. Just right now, the growing pains are too much and I can't recommend it to anybody. And uh, it sucks to say, 
because you know I like Steve and I like all this uh, the whole team over there. But um, nobody gets a free pass. And uh, if you're having growing pains, different issues, well, let me just take a step back and let you fix your issues because that's what you need time. And uh, maybe my transactions are gumming up part of the work and there's a problem with that. And um, I'll go someplace else until you fix these things. I think Steve knows and the whole team know it's nothing personal, but it is what it is. But uh, I will reiterate, I still believe in Voyager and what they're doing. I still think they're going to be a great uh brokerage and, and and everything that they have going on and with that loyalty program c- coming down, down the pipe it's going to be great just right now uh if you're new i can't have you exposed to that and there's a lot of other options uh, for you so again nobody gets a free pass all right so first of all if you follow me all the way to the end that was a lot of watching thanks so much i appreciate it if you liked the video and found some value give it a thumbs up also consider subscribing a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive and that is it for today so Thanks so much for uh, listening, and I'll see you on the next one.